He sounds a little like Jack Black. He has five kids and started vlogging, which means video diaries, in early March of 2009. That would be three years and two months after when I had started. I wondered if he was watching me back in 2006 and if I was the one who gave him the idea to start his channel on YouTube. I happen to wonder if Shay's channel would disappear like mine had in 2007. What would his fans say about him being gone? Can you picture that yourselves? Well, picture that now. And it was like the same with me. Everyone freaked. Everyone was sad and really angry. I just wonder what happened had happened to those people that emailed me on YouTube who said they were suicidal ones. Without my videos to cheer them up, did they end their lives? So sad to even think about them. It wasn't until Monday, March 10th, 2014 when I was searching Norna, my Norna name, on Google search to see if anything was new about me, sometimes people would ask on forums where I am and found that the Norna page on YouTube was reopened. It, that took me by complete surprise. That same day, I called. I recalled that maybe one of my online YouTube friends helped me get in when I told them my old email accounts months before. They were trying to help me get unsuspended. I don't recall who it was that asked me for my old emails, though. I went straight to work with downloading the important videos like meeting Meg Cabot in June of 2006, a family's wedding I went to in September of 2006, and when I was visiting pigs at my brother's ex-girlfriend's house in June of 2006, and saved them on my site, that site that will remain anonymous. Something happened to Paul. Before I get ahead of myself, he called me on Wednesday, February 14th, 2007, to let me know that he will be coming in April to visit me. He had a job lined up in order to save money, in order to hang out with me, do things like maybe go to a movie or whatever. And he wanted to look for an apartment for himself in my town. He helped me fill out a form from Goodwill and then he got serious about his next topic. This is what he had to say. On Tuesday night, I had a dream. He told me he was in my house Tuesday night, standing in my bedroom doorway. When he was telling me this, I thought back to the night, remembering seeing something in the doorway of my bedroom. A tall shadow. I was laying on my back, saying my prayers to myself and thinking that the shadow in the doorway was just my imagination, my mind playing tricks on me. Patches was crying really loudly in the kitchen, and Paul told me on the phone 
that he could hear her meows too. <coughs> when I was halfway through my prayers, I turned to my other side, facing my bedroom window, and Paul walked up to my bedside. He went really close to me, is what he said on the phone, and sniffed my hair. I said, hi, Nora, Paul said to me over the phone. I never heard him say that to me that Tuesday night, nor heard him sniff my hair. I simply ended my prayers with an amen and rolled back on my back. The shadow was still in my doorway. Thinking back to that that Tuesday night, I remember Paul telling me he could astral project. He was really experienced in doing that, and he had been doing it since he was a teenager. In case you don't know what astral production is, it is where you have an outer body experience but you're not dead and believe everything you see is a dream. This is why I was about to ask Paul, is that you? But I only got out Paul and the shadow disappeared. I was telling Paul about this on the phone and he told me he saw me Tuesday night. He was quiet for a minute. You really said that? He asked. Yeah, I didn't know what I was seeing and I was wondering if it was you. Nora, I thought it was a dream but now I understand why it felt so real. As soon as I heard my name, I woke up suddenly. To be honest, I had tried to astral project in the past, but it never worked. <coughs> I got to the point where I felt like I was floating over my body, and then my bedroom felt like it was close. My bedroom walls were f closing in on me. That made me qu quit trying and open my eyes. The only thing, wait, the only time when it did work was when we were still living at my old house. At the time, I was sharing a bedroom with sister. It was right after when mom tucked us in. And feeling pretty tired, I fell asleep right away, or so I thought. I remember Mom looking in the closet in the hallway outside our room. But for what, I don't remember. Our black male cat, Midnight, we adopted because my siblings and I found him as a stray, was in the hallway with mom, just sitting there. I walked right up to midnight. His face was right up to mine, is what I recall now. Mom says something, don't remember what, turns around, midnight walks off to another part of the hallway. And I opened my eyes, finding myself back in the bedroom I had sh was sharing with sister. Mom was still saying whatever she was saying, and I felt confused to what just happened. Years later, watching Montel, he had Sylvia Brown on his show. She talked about this topic and explained that really experienced astral projectors visit other plane of existence. They can talk to people that are doing astral projection as well, she said. And
can possibly talk with those that have passed. Once I forget when Paul even told me on the phone that he and his friend, don't recall his friend's name, had traveled to the past. I didn't know that doing astral projection could make time travel happen like how Paul had described to me. All he said was he was walking around some railroad crossing in a wooded area. Saturday, February 17th, 2007, 8.37 a.m. Hi, R. Just so you know, I'm still a good friend to you and forgive you because you are mad. People do dumb things when they are mad and act goofy when they are mad. No one can stay mad forever just like how Patty can't be mad at me forever if I hug her too hard. Or step on her tail or feet by accident, you know? Friendship should be like a cat's forgiveness. I hope you have a nice day. Yeah, I know you're probably thinking, Nora, don't even dare to talk to this lady after she had put, after what she had put you through. Didn't you ever learn anything? I had decided to forgive that lady. Because R wasn't the one who called me dumb and stupid. Earlier that month, I also sent her gifts in the mail. Thursday, February 22nd, 2007, 9.28 a.m. Hi, Nora. Thank you so much for the puppy calendar and the gifts you sent me in the mail. I appreciate them. That was very kind and thoughtful of you, girl. I love pups. And the root beer barrels were delicious. Thank you. Thanks again for thinking of me, and I hope you're doing well. Hugs to you and cute Patty Poo. All right. After seeing that message, I was pretty excited, jumping around in the chair as I sat reading that email. I went upstairs in the kitchen where mom and I, where mom was, and I was smiling really big. Boy, you look like the cat who swallowed the bird, is what mom said, surprising me so happy. I told her why I was happy, and mom said, See, I told you you'd hear from her. On Thursday, March 6, 2007, because my friends and I met on YouTube, joined my video, and were uploading their videos there, I joined too. Paul to me, the cat is out of the bag, if you know what I mean. She knows now. I don't have to hide anything anymore. Wow, is what I thought to myself. He told his wife about a divorce, that he wanted a divorce. 